What's going on guys, TK Pryor coming at you with part two of your future because part one got interrupted, I got a phone call. So part two simply continues on the topic of the markets. And uh, what you have to do is figure out where you're gonna position yourself financially and how do you aggressively move forward in a strategic manner that's gonna get your, uh, your finances on tap. You know what I'm saying? If you don't figure that out, uh, you're just going to become victimized. <laughs> you know, people who don't act, react. And when you react within this new financial market, uh, it's all about timing. Okay. The early bird gets the worm. And if your timing is too late, you're going to find yourself outpriced of the market simply because your income is fixed. The market is also fixed, but it's increasing. Okay. You have two things taking place right now. The traditional market is decreasing. The uh, alternative market of cryptocurrency is increasing. So if you want to financially make it, you have to position yourself as a pioneer within the alternative market of cryptocurrency. Now, I mentioned the rigs that take place in cryptocurrency because people talk about, oh, that's fake money that has no place in the future. Well, I follow... Um, analytics. I mean, that's a very important factor in any real investor in a stock market. You know, analytics can cost you thousands of dollars every month, but it is the study and statistics within um, the math that shows you where you should place your money, okay? Usually based on PE, profit ratios. So when it comes to uh, cryptocurrency, I still follow analytics. And the current analytics use the internet through robo searches to figure out what's trending and what will be trending years forward. And those two things are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, on the Ethereum scale, most people don't know what Bitcoin is, much less Ethereum. And Ethereum is quickly chasing Bitcoin in market cap. And Billionaire companies are involved in Ethereum because Ethereum as a concept is the internet of, well, Bitcoin is the internet of money. Ethereum is the world computer, which means other platforms can be built on top of the cryptographic algorithm of Ethereum and act as a foundation or act as a internet for those platforms. So a lot of billionaire companies are getting involved in Ethereum to build platforms to scale on the Ethereum foundation. And what that means is you'll have a lot of dApps, decentralized applications that are built within Ethereum that allow you to do things that you currently can't do. So doors are opening, the future is now, and the advancement within the industry is uh, exponential. Whereas before, the industry of money would advance in about 20 years. We're looking at half that time now, okay? So not paying attention means getting left behind. And as I always say, victimized because uh, it's money. <laughs> you know, uh, money means that you act, you get rewarded. You don't act, you get punished. So you always are rewarded or punished based on your decisions, okay? You decide today creates tomorrow. You know, we project through our thought processes and manifest through our energy, but when you are not participating in that projection, you're just uh, a robot, you know, you're a sheep. So other people are projecting what they want and creating realities that they would like to see, and then you are reacting to those uh, projections, manifestations, and creations. So these videos that I do are in result of my study, but also in case somebody's listening. Uh, like I say, most of the times I feel like I'm talking to myself and it turns into uh, self-therapy in my own plans, directions, and goals. But in the event that there's one, uh, I still make these recordings. So going forward in the future, Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin are taking over the cryptocurrency space, the alternative market which you can position yourself. If you would have went all in, which in, when Ethereum first came out, I didn't. When Bitcoin first came out, I didn't. But you'll be a millionaire today if you would have went all in with at least 
a, a thousand uh, when both currencies first came out uh, Bitcoin is older was going on 10 years old ethereum is half that not even half that old okay so you have to know what the project in cryptocurrency is about because every coin has its own platform every coin is its own uh micro economy okay so if you understand the micro economy behind the coin and you feel like it has potential that's when you should invest in such or said coin so my conversation today is about positioning, about the decisions that you make, about participating in um, the market so that you can win, and also pointing out the fact that the system has a dichotomy right now. The dichotomy of the financial market is one going down and going down quickly, one going up and going up quickly. Now, some people talk about the birth, you know, of cryptocurrency the phoenix that rose from the ashes of 2008 was cryptocurrency and fundamentally people don't understand because barely do people understand fractional reserve banking and the slavery debt system that keeps you in perpetual uh, uh servitude because that's what paper money is. I mean, every debt note that's printed into existence comes with interest. So you can't afford to pay back the interest, much less the principal, which means you're perpetually in servitude or slavitude or debt. And that's the process in which we live in the modern economy of finance. It's mostly based on debt. So that leads me to the derivative debt bubble. And also, it directly correlates to the electronic market rigging that exists within what people consider tangibles. Because Comdex and LBMA are electronic markets. They don't trade in physical. Now, Shanghai Goldfix was supposed to come out and actually base its trades on physical. Now, why did I actively jump in the cryptocurrency market? Because the cryptocurrency market is physical. <laughs> Once you pull your money and post it to the worldwide uh, Quicken, the worldwide ledger, then it is physical, meaning that an actual transaction took place, not a fucking lie on an electronic spreadsheet that can be manipulated up, down, with the click of a button. So people don't grasp the concept that the gold and silver market is fixed by electronic ledgers. The physical trades in gold and silver don't fucking happen. There's no way possible that that much fucking gold and silver is transacting between people on a consistent basis. That shit is paper shorts. Derivatives on a ledger, that simply means that someone bought a piece of paper and receipt of gold, but didn't take physical delivery of gold. What crashed Mt. Gox? It was people asking for physical delivery of the Bitcoin that they put in that exchange. When they found out that they didn't have any gold, I mean, any uh, Bitcoin in the fucking exchange, the exchange crashed. So goes back to the old, eight old, the, old, uh, the old adage, if you don't own the private keys to your ledger, then the ledger or the asset is not yours. Bitcoin is nothing but an electronic recording of value in a ledger. But the access to that value is done through private keys. And if that key is not in your possession, you don't own that Bitcoin, it's not yours. And that's what takes place when you trust your Bitcoin to these exchanges. I use exchanges and centralized uh, wallets as a pass-through, meaning I buy on Coinbase, I transfer out of the fuck of Coinbase and put it in my private wallet. So it's a pass-through. I don't leave any money on an exchange ever since my Bittrex account was hacked. Anything of real value, I immediately transfer to a private wallet within that ecosystem. Because most coins, if it's a worthwhile project has its own wallet. So transfer the coins off the fucking exchange and put it in your private wallet 
and your private wallet should be a decentralized wallet that gives you access to your private keys. If you can't go into the settings of your wallet and see a button under advanced that says private and public key, then you don't fucking own that asset. That asset exists within the uh, company that you're fucking leasing. So wise up, smarten up, get some financial IQ, realize that the gold and silver market is based on Condex and LBMA shorts. It's not based on physical delivery. Shanghai was supposed to fix that, but Shanghai hasn't fucking released. It hasn't even opened, and it was supposed to already open. So that's why I love cryptocurrency, because cryptocurrency is based on physical trades when you get the fuck out of these uh, exchanges. When you actually get into a private wallet and me doing a peer-to-peer -peer exchange from person to person, then that is recorded on the blockchain of that cryptocurrency and it's forever. So it's like a bank statement for exchange value that's recorded publicly for everyone to see and it's immutable and also it's forever. Wake up, make some profit, uh, profit decisions. And then also participate in the new economy, which is the 21st century, the alternative uh, market, which is cryptocurrency, and participate in it not just by buying and holding. Participate it in it by investing. How do you participate in cryptocurrency by investing? You actually use uh, robobots. You use uh, uh, algorithm uh, trading programs that trade on your behalf do micro trades in every second so that now you're hiring a computer to trade cryptocurrency for you and give you profits every single day. That's how I participate in cryptocurrency because I have an income in cryptocurrency. My income goes up when Bitcoin goes up. Now, it leads me to the next topic, which I'm going to cut this short because I know attention spans are like fucking TV commercials, but Cryptocurrency and these experts all reference the traditional markets for their analogies. So because Bitcoin has scaled with actual supply and demand, meaning that the more money in, the higher the price goes. So because the price has gone high, people are now talking about a crash. There's a cryptocurrency crash going. It's coming because the price is so fucking high. Well, here's the deal. The actual blockchain is based on money in and money out. So a crash would mean that people pull money out of Bitcoin and a lot of people with that. So the high price in Bitcoin means that a lot of people have put money into it through the fucking actual recording public decentralized ledger. Okay, not through a fucking exchange, but through a real interface with the blockchain. So how is it that a crash is coming if people don't panically withdraw their money? A million people sell all their Bitcoin, that will cause a crash. <clears throat> so what factors in Bitcoin make people to panic sell? That's what you would have to ask yourself if the experts are right about a crash coming because the price of Bitcoin is so high. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Open your fucking mind so you can open your wallets, make some better decisions, and get to the point where you run you instead of the fucking tell-a-lie vision.